Imaging channel for this Sunday night. I hear it's Rosh Hashanah, so greetings to everybody out there. Um, tonight, we're going to have Rachel Freed talk to us, and she's going to tell us a little bit about all we need to know about um, um, getting really involved and getting other people involved in um, science with astronomy. And uh, more than just taking the pretty pictures, you know, getting some some real work done in various things. And I'm interested in that. I, I just took delivery of my meteor cam and pretty soon my meteor cam team, from what I understand, will be able to, to tell where all the meteors are coming from in the world or something like that. I'll, I'll learn more as I go. Um, I want to I want to start sharing my screen here and take you to a couple of places that we've got to show you some interesting things. And I'm going to share my entire screen. And uh, I have to go to a different program here. Where is that program? Wake up, wake up, wake up. First thing I want to tell you about is that we have uh, on our website here, we've got a number of things of interest. And Rachel's going to be talking right there. If you uh, click on this little box right down here in the corner, you'll get to Rumble Talk. And on Rumble Talk, you can join the conversation. But I have to tell you, there uh, simply aren't that many people on the conversation over in Rumble Talk anymore because we've been discouraging it. We've been asking people to head over to YouTube and, and use the comment sections over on YouTube because among other things, um, those comments over there stay with the program forever. So when you make a comment or ask a question or something like that, people can see that the questions are still there through time. So um, I'll monitor Rumble Talk over here uh, for the day again. But um, believe me, as time goes on, it, it, nobody talks over here anymore. So um, try to get into that uh, to YouTube over there. OK, then I'm going to come back up here for upcoming shows. And uh, you see Rachel Freed's today. And Ray, it, Ray checked in a little bit earlier with us uh, pre-show, making sure that his communications is working. And he's going to be back next week to tell us about APCC. And then remember when um, Tolga, a couple of weeks back, filled in for one of our missing um, presenters, and he took us on a little tour of Deep Sky West? Well, Lloyd Smith, who actually knows the details about um, Deep Sky West remote observatories, will be here. I'm looking forward to Sunday, October 20th. As you know, I, I work a lot with Sequence Generator Pro and Nina, uh, N-I-N-A, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy, will be here. And it's, um, it's a joint program with a whole lot of enthusiastic people um, that um, nominally does the same thing. It's a session manager. And we've had some real good reviews of session managers lately. And I'll be interested to see what that one's about. We've rescheduled Greg Kink Krinklaw from last week to next um, to October 27th. And then Ann Zabladoff will be here. She's from, uh, I think, Arizona State. And she's going to uh, tell us about a program she's got that she needs some help with, again, getting science imaging done. Last year at nightfall, Greg Beneke um, had a pretty interesting discussion about uh, what he's learned in astroimaging. And these programs are usually generally pretty popular um, I, where people say, hey, this is the rig I started out with and I learned that I had to do this better and that better and stuff like that. And so um, he's got a show that goes like that. I saw it last year at nightfall. And so it was pretty interesting. Speaking of nightfall, let's go over here. Uh, you've got another, what, a couple of, it's October 24th, 27th, so it's coming up in about a month. This is where the, uh, the oh, couple hundred astronomers take over a resort uh, in Southern California in a dark sky site. And we have a pretty good show. Um, you can see it's got pools. There's a bar in your, I mean, this isn't someplace where you can drink at a, at a star party. This is a bar at a star party. Pretty cool. There's actually two pools and spas and hotel rooms and stuff like that. <laughs> Usually by this time, the hotel is pretty well reserved, but you can always find lots of other places to camp in town. And uh, also of note here, uh, Richard Wright. Here's Richard. He's a cute little guy here. Uh, Richard will be here to tell us about uh, his best practices in astroimaging. Now that does take a registration. So if you go to the nightfall sky party, nightfallstarparty.com and click on the workshops link, you can find out about registering. That's on Saturday um, and uh, probably starts at nine or 10 o'clock. I, I haven't decided yet. 
And one of our friends who has presented on the show not long ago is going to have is going to be down under down in Australia. And so Carrie wanted us to mention that she's going to be part of the Night Sky Masters class um, down in uh, Cape Shank, which uh, I understand is someplace near Melbourne, but I'm, I'm not sure. Is that right, uh, Terry? Um, I don't know. But at any rate, uh, Carrie, as you know, is a really good presenter. She's been here. Yuri and Alex Cherney will be there. Yuri Beletsky and Al Alex Cherney will be here. Um, so we just wanted to put a shout out for that. We appreciate the work Carrie's done for us. And if you are down in Australia, you might want to hook up with the image processing masterclass and, and get into that. But what we're here, really here for today is uh, to talk about, um, I'm screen sharing. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Back to, um, uh, I'm going to introduce Rachel. Rachel, you ready to go? Yes, sir. Go to it. Oh, that was my introduction. Awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, it's very exciting to be here. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. So um, I'm going to talk about um, the student research projects that I run and, and what we do and, and connect it to the astro imaging. I know that most of you who are here are really astro imagers. Um, and of course, that's um, sort of for me, what how I got into this work. So I'm going to share my screen for a moment, if that's all right, and just kind of walk you through a little bit about how I got into the astronomy research seminar and what we do with students and the publication. And um, if people have questions, I'd love to answer questions. Uh, so let me share my screen, which I do by. Uh, I, I got this. Hang on. Share screen. And share that screen. Rachel, click on the click on the screen that you're sharing. It when you you'll get a white box. I think I I think I got it. Can you guys see my okay. robotic telescopes in education? Can okay. you see that? Yep, got it. Okay. All right. So um so I've done a little bit of imaging myself. <laughs> Mainly what I do is I take my telescopes out and do a lot of outreach and then hold the iPhone up to the telescope and take pictures. Those are my moon pictures and uh, the Milky Way galaxy, <laughs> the Milky Way that I took a couple nights ago out at the Cal Star Star Party. But um, what you can see there in the middle are um, a bunch of students up at Mount Wilson Observatory. So what I do is I work with students to use astronomy because astronomy is so amazing and captures the imagination and provides this really great jumping off point for getting into science. Um, it, it attracts people much more than, say, chemistry. Um, I've been studying this for about 15 years now, uh, sort of people's reactions to when you talk about, oh, I do chemistry versus, oh, I do astronomy, how people react to those. And everyone, almost everyone loves astronomy. Um, <laughs> so um, I have, I started out about 20 years ago doing some astrophotography, well, a little bit at the Robert Ferguson Observatory, which is up here in California, Northern California, where I am. Um, and the center picture is the first picture I ever took um, at 51. And when it showed up on the screen, oh my gosh, I literally jumped out of my chair with excitement. And um, I don't know how many of you still maybe have those reactions when you're taking pictures, but um, I had access to this incredible um, equipment. Uh, and I had been a teacher for 10 years um, and had been trying to figure out how do you make education really meaningful? How do you make it, how do you get the students to connect to it? And of course, I, because I loved astronomy, I would take out my telescope during eclipses and everything like, you know, everything exciting. And I would try to connect, I was teaching mainly chemistry. I would try and connect chemistry to astronomy. What was a lot of fun was we were doing um, spectroscopy here and studying, you know, the electron transitions. And um, this was back, actually, some of these pictures are from about 2004, and I was volunteering at NASA Ames when the Mars um, Spirit and Opportunity rovers landed, and we were getting back these images, these spectral images, um, and then I could connect it to what we were doing in the classroom. And so I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make education meaningful and relevant for students. Um, and then about five years ago, I left the classroom and started working for the Astronomical, Pacific, Astronomical Society of the Pacific, um, where I got to start using all of these, there, uh, like the Skynet telescopes. So if you know about Skynet, there's a, at any given time, about 10 to 18 different telescopes around the world, including the prompt telescopes in Chile that are on Skynet accessible through the internet and you can do imaging on them and they have different color filters and whatnot. And I was teaching, I got to, through the ASP, teach educators around the world, no, around the country, how to, um, how to use Skynet with students. 
Um, and then what was fun, I also love to play with Arduinos and little devices. And, and so the ASP asked me to come and, um, and, and run a program where we brought in amateur astronomers. They had this grant and they said, hey, um, Rachel, get all your, you know, all the people who might be interested in playing with Arduinos and, and similar little microcontrollers and they want to build, you know, if they want to build something for amateur astronomers. So they came in for six months and, and got all these equi this equipment. And um, because I love astronomy and I'm a part of a lot of groups, I knew a lot of amateur astronomers and, and imagers and whatnot. And so I brought in all people I could find. And one of the cool things, the Ferguson Observatory, which I had been a part of, um, they actually ended up using two Arduinos to control the roll off roof and everything, actually not this roll off roof, but the one um, on the top image, but everything about that observatory, the, the, the weather stations, the opening and closing of the roof, it's all now controlled by little Arduinos. So I've gotten to be involved in all of these amazing projects. And I've been a volunteer at this place for 10 years. I've been an amateur astronomer for 20 years. Um, these bottom pictures, that's my little girl <laughs> next to the 24 inch telescope. Um, they both grew, she, she's older now and it's a 40 inch telescope, but um, there's been this amazing community built up um, that I've, I've gotten to be part of and I appreciate it so much that I wanna bring that to students. And so that's what I do. Um, and so a couple of years ago, I met uh, Russ Janae, if, if any of you have heard of him, he, he wrote some of the original books on controlling your telescope with microcomputers and, or, and all that um, in the late 80s. Um, and we founded the Institute for Student Astronomical Research. So it's it's now a nonprofit organization. We got National Science Foundation funding, um, but we basically ha go around, I got to go around the country this year teaching people teachers, um, faculty at, at community colleges and students how to do really basic astronomy research. For, and um, Eric, we were talking about this earlier. The What this can instill in students, the passion, the um, the the sort of interest in science for, for many people that never would have thought about science before. If you can start doing some astronomy and then start understanding science through astronomy, it's really powerful. Um, and I get to meet cool people like Kip Thorne shown here. So uh, what we do, here's an example of what we do. And some of you may know, I don't know if you know Dennis Conti, that's Dennis Conti right there, of Exoplanet, AAVSO fame. Um, and some students, Dave Rowe, the chief uh, engineer for plane wave instruments, um, anyway, so we meet with students and we actually use telescopes, usually remotely, but not always, to collect data. And so, for example, this image on the right with the purple rating on it, that's the that's data we got probably at that point off a, a Sierra Remote Observatory Telescope, a plane wave that we were using. And we do astrometric measurements and then we teach the students how to write for science, write scientifically, how to communicate their science. Um, it, the one on the left, of course, that's an exoplanet transit that we were working on. So um, the Institute for Student Astronomical Research, we create, we've put together sort of a handbook for small telescope astronomical research that goes through how to do research, how to write for publication. We've created a whole course online that um, we teach and we then help instructors teach it to their students. Um, and then I create tutorials for everything that I need to learn how to do once I figure it out or learn it. I create tutorials for other people so that everyone doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. And this is where I might um, appeal to any of you out there listening who have been doing imaging and you have this expertise and this knowledge. If there's something that you are that you love to share and you know how to do it, and if there's something that students would like to learn how to do, it would be super amazing to bring these bring you together. That's one of the things I love to do. And again, um, Eric and I were talking earlier, and this whole concept of students publishing research, it changes their identity. It changes how they feel about you know, who they are. Can, they can be a scientist. They realize that a scientist and science is not some abstract faraway thing that they could never be. Um, so this is actually the April of this year, Journal of Double Star Observations. That's where we publish a lot of our work and all the ones with stars next to them are actually um, papers that were written and published by student teams doing research. Um, and uh, you can see they're making a huge contribution and doing some really cool stuff. Um, one of the things that I'm really enjoying is seeing uh, how they're contributing to the science in terms of doing measurements that actually show like one pair of double stars actually 
isn't gravitationally bound. So it's not an actual binary system. So really contributing to the science. Um, and I love, I love numbers and data and graphs. And so these are the number on the left, the number of student publications in the JDSO from around to, from 2008 until uh, this uh, three quarters of the way through 2019. Um, and there's a lot now. You can see 2016 and, and 18, we had over 30 papers published by students. And then on the right, it just shows the percentage of, of journal articles in the Journal of Double Star Observations. Um, written by students. So the, this is students having an impact and being impacted. And I don't know about all you listening and, and watching, but the idea that, you know, of helping our, you know, our citizens become scientifically literate is, so, I feel, so important. Um, our students also do cool things like develop software and write Python code um, and create new tools. So this is actually created by a student within the last six months, a new browser-based tool to search for stars that you are in your telescope's capability of, of, um, of imaging. Um, we have other students who have developed programs to study the parameters, the seven parameters that go into an orbit um, with an online um, uh, graphing calculator. So the students are really contributing to the field and it's a lot of fun. Um, I also work with uh, Michael Fitzgerald down in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, and he teaches these courses through and has developed this amazing curriculum, Our Solar Siblings. And we're teaching, at this point between he and I, over 100 educators around the country how to do research with students. And it's super fun. Um, and in case you're wondering what students are capable of, this is high school students. Um, photometric detection of extrasolar planetary transits across sun-like stars. That's all their own data that they collected, their analysis. This is a poster that they presented at a conference recently. So they're doing some really amazing science. Um, and now that we have the Gaia the data release two, we're incorporating that into all of our research. Um, and it's really cool to get students involved. Um, here's another one, multiband photometry of our, our Lyra stars. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat. And we're building a big community around this, literally a global community. Um, the other thing that I do is, um, I'm going to, after this slide, I'm going to stop sharing so that I can see everyone or everyone can see me. But um, I put on conferences around the country um, for students to present their research. For example, um, this was at um, NIAC uh, and NIF this past year. I put on a four hour workshop where anyone could come and learn about the astronomy research seminar and also students that have done research within the seminar got to present their work. So you kind of educators could, could come and see what the results of this kind of program. And then the students get to meet people like Don Pettit, the NASA astronaut who's, you know, spent a year of his life on the International Space Station. And he, you know, he's standing there, actually he's sitting there listening to their presentations. Talk about an authentic experience. And I know that um, many of you may not be educators, but from an educator's understanding of things, um, having an authentic experience um, sort of audience for your presentations is really an important part of being engaged in what you're doing and and sort of stepping up your game. Um, so these students presented their research and then got to meet astronaut Don Pettit. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Um, stop sharing the screen. Did that stop sharing? Can you guys see me? I feel like I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, right. Yeah. Remember, when you ask us a question, we have to unmute. Right, right. It takes a few seconds. So, right. so I just I, I wanted to just take a moment and just sort of say this is this is what I do. Um, get students involved and build this community around um, education and research. And one thing I love about the um, amateur astronomy and the imaging community is there's so much knowledge and expertise and experience and a many many people who, who have been using these telescopes for so long love to share what they know. And then there's this whole world of students that want to learn it. And so one of my goals is to pair those groups together. So some other examples, um, I hold workshops after um, the annual symposium for the Society for Astronomical Sciences here in California. Every year they have their three-day meeting. And on the day afterwards, I hold a workshop again for the same, you know, bring in amateur astronomers and educators and students and sort of get everyone involved in the conversations and, and help these students understand science 
through astronomy and imaging. Um, another one I was invited this past year um, I, to be, I was the opening keynote speaker at the Texas Star Party. Uh, and that was amazing because you have what 400 really advanced amateurs. And actually yesterday, um, Dave Clark, who runs TSP, called because I had said, I want to bring students and I want them to come and get to do research and learn imaging from all of these experienced people. He called yesterday and they're working on, we're working out the details on how that can happen. So there will be students doing research and writing papers for publication <laughs> at TSP um, this coming May. Um, I also have put on a couple workshops at Mount Wilson where the students use the 100 inch Hooker telescope that of course is super famous for Edwin Hubble's discovery of Andromeda being a, a galaxy, et cetera. Um, and students were using that this summer and I'm helping them finish write, writing their papers for publication. So it's just this amazing combination of people who are passionate about what they do and really good at it, people who want to learn, um, educators who want to provide this for their students. And then this, of course, historical you know, legacy. Um, I put on a workshop at Lick Observatory also in March. So um, we've had Lick Observatory, Mount Wilson. And um, when we go to the Texas Star Party next year, we're also going to be going to McDonald Observatory. Um, and there's more. But anyway, so that's um, a little bit about uh, what I do, the research and working with the students. Um, and I have tons more to say about it too. I could go on and on, but I first wanted to see if there's any questions or um, comments that people have. I, I don't have access to the chat at the moment. Um, but are there questions? Eric, you got anything over there? Uh, there are some comments, but really there are no questions over on YouTube. Okay. Everyone um, saying great presentation though. So. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, <laughs> all right. So if there's no questions, I have a little bit more. Uh, 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 question, question. Where, what age kids are we talking about here? Oh. oh, thanks for asking that. So actually, as young as eighth grade, we've had eighth graders do like an intensive three day workshop where they go and, and learn to collect data, learn to analyze the data and learn how to write a paper over like, you know, three nights and three days. Um, but uh, it's geared largely towards high school up through college and un undergraduate. So we have um that whole range we've worked with a lot of community colleges and actually what's really cool so i said i went around the country this year teaching people about this so i went to a lot of conferences and workshops and i was hoping to get mm, 10 to 20 people signed up to take the astronomy research seminar that i'm teaching now online um to go through this process for themselves so they can bring it to their students turns out i now have 57 people in the course and about 30 of those are college instructors from about 14 different states um, who are taking the course some of them with students and then there's there's also some high school teachers and high school students and college students enrolled in the course so all of these people are going to be doing research now um, over the next couple of weeks collecting data analyzing and learning to write and then and then i was asked to speak at the international astronomical unions first biennial astronomy education conference. So about two weeks ago, I was in Munich, no, uh, well, near Munich, Germany, speaking at the International Astronomical Union's co conference on astronomy education about this. And there was a lot of interest globally, um, of course. Um, and so it's really expanding and it's, it's amazing. And um, I even have some teachers from Portugal and Italy who are taking my class now. <laughs> Rachel, can I interrupt you for a moment? I want to yeah. tell, tell everybody a story while yeah. you take a breath here. Um, I, 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 many of you know that I have a, a place out at um, in the desert here in California, along with the rest of our club. We've got lots of observatories and pads, and we have a monthly star party out there with the Riverside Astronomical Society. And uh, I have an observatory there, and being an old man with lots of stuff in my observatory um people are often coming by and saying hey can i borrow a usb you got a 15 foot cable with a you know mini end or something like that last night somebody borrowed a whole ring system to hold his guide scope okay so this last summer i was minding my own business and i'm sitting there with holes in my t-shirt and shorts and, and flip-flops <laughs> and um Somebody sticks their head in the observatory door and says, uh, Mr. McConaughey, can we use the chairs in the garage? And I go, yeah, sure. That's what they're there for. 
And about three seconds ago, wait a minute, what did you call me? I mean, we don't, most of us don't even know that most of us have last names. I mean, Eric doesn't know my last name, Tolga. I don't know what Tolga's last name, you know. <laughs> And I'm going, well, what was that from? And it, and, and so I stuck my head and said, hey, what'd you call me, kid? And uh, he says, oh, remember me? I'm, you used to come to our club and our, to our, uh, at Ramona High School. And um, I was the president of the club. And you, you, you came over there and spoke a few times. And we always liked it. And so we bought a whole bunch of people out here. And uh, so this is the kind of thing you get. You get called yeah. by your last name. It's really cool. All right. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, I have a question for you. You've been doing this for quite a while. Do you know if any of your, I guess, former students have ended up in graduate programs? Oh, I am so glad you asked that question. Yes, they have. They we, they do. And and actually, so yes, um, I have a couple stories there. But um, I'll say that when we got a National Science Foundation grant for three years, part of that grant was to do um, evaluation on the program. And so I actually interviewed 15 students who had been in the astronomy research seminar um, over the last 10 years. So before I got involved, so I was, I looked people up and, and, you know, Google stocked them and, and I interviewed and we did surveys and yes, there, and we, we could give you some, you know, names of about five people that um, have gone and got their getting PhDs or got PhDs in astrophysics. But um, more than that, uh, just, all of the people, almost all the people that I interviewed talked about how that experience, how it really did change them. Some of them had actually turned them onto a science pathway when they weren't even on that. Because I'll tell you, a lot of the students we work with, they're not even in a science major. And of course, if they're in high school, there's no major yet. <laughs> um, but so there are students that have gone from non-science to science. There have stu been students who went from one science to PhD in astrophysics. We got an email from um, Alex Filipenko, actually. So Russ, Janae, and Alex Filipenko have a relationship that goes back many years. And um, they communicated a couple months ago. And Alex sent an email to Russ and said, oh, by the way, I have a new student in my lab and he took your seminar and he said really great things about your seminar. And, and I actually knew the name of that student because I had worked with him about three years ago. So, um, and actually I, in my presentation, I do get to some of the, some of the evaluation that we do. Now, of course, uh, we, I haven't talked to everyone and I'm sure there's some students for whom it maybe didn't turn them onto science, but everyone I talked to and I've done, I've gotten about, 90 surveys back from different students and they all found value in the program whether it was in learning how to work in teams because we asked about that and learning how to use technology and just all the stuff so yes we it, it makes a difference um and i'm actually in a phd program right now i'm getting a phd in astronomy education and these are the questions that i'm actually looking at in greater detail <laughs> You know, we have a comment over on YouTube, probably worth reading. I think you've made another recruit. It's from Michael Aiken. Uh -huh. I started a remote observatory with a plane wave 24 inch doing AAVSO and other science research. And I'd be interested in any students that would like to be a part of it. Yay. 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 That, I love that. So um, we'll send you that information, that contact, and so you can follow up with Michael. I love that. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, no, that's that's the thing. Um, one of the things as I recognize, you know, over the last 20 years, I've benefited so much from the people that have reached out to help me and to provide me with equipment. And, you know, if I don't have my own stuff and have taught me and and then when I was in the classroom, seeing how what what impact this could have on students so that I'm really working to build that greater community. So Michael, that's amazing. Thank you. And by the way, I should mention Plane Wave Instruments. They have been my number one supporter. They have really um, sponsored me for a lot of the outreach that I do. Um, and they're really working with Instar a lot and they're amazing. And of course their equipment's amazing. So thank you <laughs> to Plane Wave. Um, another, actually another really cool thing that happened recently in June, we, um, the Institute for Student Astronomical Research that I co-founded, um, we partnered with some other people and, and put on with NASA the, the first, uh, let's see, building the NASA citizen science community workshop. And it was really great. And I've been asked to write a proposal to do a second one that brings together NASA astronomy with citizen science 
um, citizen scientists, which essentially is what um, imagers and amateur astronomers are. They're, you know, people that understand the science, have the technical know-how, have equipment, and can really contribute to what NASA does with the massive surveys, the, the LSST. I shouldn't say just NASA, but, um, you know, the European Space Agency and everyone else. Um, anyway, it's really exciting to bring all these groups together. So, um, do you guys want to see more pictures? I have more pictures of, in my presentation. I'll share the screen again. <laughs> Because this is so fun. Uh, sharing screen, share screen two, share. Um, so this, uh, if you, can you guys see the screen? Yes, we can see you, Rachel. Okay, awesome. So um, the two left pictures are actually at Mount Wilson in the hundred inch um, from this June, and. What was so incredible to me was, so these students are collecting data. We actually attached a high-speed camera to the 100 inch and we were doing speckle interferometry so we could get really close doubles. Um, and because we had this, this high-speed camera with a really small field of view, we were able to improve the pointing model on the 100 inch. And so having Tom Menaghini, who who's the director of, of Mount Wilson Observatory, when, it, you know, when, it, when we'd get the star in our camera, you know, he'd, he'd ask a student volunteer to go and we'd go into the little room where we, you know, add another point to the pointing model on the telescope. And for the students, these are high school students and, you know, they don't quite yet know what a pointing model is, except that I was able to go in and describe it to them because I'm, I, I find that I'm constantly sort of interpreting between the scientists and engineers and students, but that's what educators do, but that they get to participate in this really valuable part of something on this incredible historic device. This 100 inch telescope was really amazing to watch. Um, and the students, in fact, um, today they sent me the final version of their paper because um, we've been editing it for a couple of months now and we're gonna submit it for publication soon. So that's exciting. Um, and then the pictures on the right are just more students giving presentations. And I don't know about all of you listening and watching, but if you remember the first time you stood up in front of an audience and talked about science, if you ever did, um, for me, it was definitely graduate school. I was for a while in a PhD program 20 years ago studying neuroscience. Um, but man, to have that opportunity to really present to people that understand and, and are interested in what you're doing at this young age, it's, it's really powerful. Um, Another slide here. Oh, this was just me presenting at the International Astronomical Union. The, what a fun experience that was for me. Oh my gosh. And everyone really loved what we were doing. In fact, I was invited to come and speak in Thailand. And I was asked if I could have three months to come and train educators in Germany. I'm really busy. It's fun. <laughs> um, but the other thing that I wanted to say is um, a year ago, the astronomy research seminar that, that we run, um, it was being taught different programs in in these locations shown on these maps from google and then um before i went to munich um i had over the past seven months recruited educators and students from all of these locations all these different states and then of course when i went to this other conference i had to make a bigger map and include europe um, but it's really amazing that this is spreading everybody loves this and as you guys know everyone listening you love this stuff um we are is there a question? I see cat eyes or someone. No. Um, uh, we get to use the Las Cumbres Observatory Network. Yeah. They, they have, have 10 telescopes, um, 0.4 meter telescopes around the globe that we have access to through the internet. And that's really fun because we can do long, long term projects like time series that go, you know, hours um and that's really fun and here's one of them this is uh i don't know where this one is located. they have some pretty sweet equipment <laughs> and of course these telescopes are the ones that professionals are using and that's another thing that's cool for students. um oh another thing that happened so i help coordinate the robotic telescope student research and education conferences it's called rtsre um, and we're having our third annual one in melbourne in december uh, but after our first one, which was in 2017 in San Diego, um, the Alaskan Base Observatory Telescope Network people recognized how, what kind of need there was for students and educators around the world 
um, to use telescopes, how much everyone wanted it. And so they developed the Global Sky Partner Program. So there's now over 20 organizations around the world that have access to those telescopes, and it's amazing. Um, and actually, this is just their online, um, the data request, you know, interface that we use, and it's pretty, it's nice and easy, but also it's what the professionals use and we get to, you know, we put in our right ascension or declination and we select our filters and exposure times. And then we also use um, the, um, Skynet telescopes and that's really fun. So um, I really like the Skynet one because um, you can see where all the different telescopes are pointing at any given moment and you can watch as your observations are being taken and, you know, camera exposing, camera aborted, etc. And you can see what the weather is like all over the world. So, um, oh, and these are, uh, they also, some of these programs, some of these online uh, telescope networks have their own software for doing photometry and astrometry and all the things we like to do. So that's really fun. Um, also, there's Micro Observatory, which is um, at the, the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, which is a really great introduction for, for younger kids to do research. Um, but this is one of the things I wanted to mention. So you guys, I got to interview all these students and do all these surveys. And um, I asked on this, uh, in the interviews and the surveys, what were one or two of the best things you got out of the seminar? Um, and this is what we heard a lot of. One of the best things was that co collaborative environment. I've worked in teams before, but it was very different. In this case, there was a lot of people from different backgrounds, different grade levels, different experiences, and being able to work one-on-one -on -one with a professor was a really interesting experience. Um, and also being able to say I have a published research paper has come in handy so many times. I'm looking for internships and it's, you know, a, a good talking point. So that's a kid that did this in 10th grade. Uh, that was a girl, a female. Um, so there's there's things like that. Um, I learned how to write a research paper and how to work as a team in a real world way. Unlike the equal participation stuff I have learned to dislike. I wasn't really in it for the astronomy, but it turns out that was pretty fun too. So there's a lot of research out there that shows that the science we do in schools, of course, we all know it's not like real science. And so people get turned off of science because they think that school science is science. And really they're, they're, they can't, that can't be farther from the truth. And so having students have this real science experience is invaluable. Um, and when I interviewed and looked, analyzed the data, the fact that writing the paper was um, the biggest benefit was pretty awesome. Students loved that and that's, Great, because that's what we're trying to teach them to do, how to write, how to communicate science. Um, and then this is my favorite, one of my favorite pictures ever. Um, this was from our, this is um, the page to our robotic telescope conference, which we're having in Melbourne um, in December. This is from last year's conference. On the left is Wayne Rosing. He um, started Luscombe Base Observatory. And on the right is Dan Reichert. He started Skynet Observatory. And this is the first time they met. This was last July in Hawaii at our conference. And that was pretty cool. It was like major global telescope network number one meets major global telescope network number two. Um, and it was cool. But anyway, we have that conference coming up. Um, and so I'm going to end my slides there. Um, that end it? Yeah, sorry, Joe, you're good. Okay, and um, and I just want to talk with everyone and answer questions and and hear what everyone has to think and or has know, to say. I have a comment. We have a couple of grandkids that are writing. Um, I guess what writing their paper for their college entrance exam. Yes. Yeah. I can just imagine if they can put down that their names on a couple of publications. Yep. People that. Do those evaluations have to look at that and blink yep. twice and go, really? That's yeah. Impressive. Yeah. And that's feedback we've gotten from students. They said, I put down publications and they were like, what? And students have said that it helped them get scholarships and helped them get into certain universities. Um, yeah, it's 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 incredible. And it's a, it's an incredible opportunity um, for so many reasons. Um, and what one of the things that I I that blows me away is the number of students that will do the astronomy research seminar, they'll go through it once and then they'll go through it again and they'll be, do an advanced course. And then they'll start up a club and get their friends doing the same kind of research or you know, start up uh, an organization at a science center. Um, and one of the, so one of the teams I worked with at Mount Wilson this summer was incredible. So it was 10 kids that are all volunteers at um, the Lewis Research Center down at uh, near Goldstone Valley, uh, Goldstone Apple Valley Radio Telescope. Anyway, so they are 
they are all seniors, high school seniors. They first did this program when they were in eighth grade, so five years ago. And for some of them, this paper that they were doing this summer was the fourth or fifth paper that they've done. And so one of the things that you look at in evaluation, and, and you asked about this earlier, like, do the, does this impact their lives down the road? And here's a, yes, five years later, they're still doing research. They started as little eighth graders. So it's, it's really incredible. Okay, Rachel, so um, I'm an astroimager, as are huh. many of the people who are out there right yeah. now. Um, I, I, okay, that, that would be lying for me to say so because I'm a former high school principal and still have contacts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I kind of know how to get into the education part of this. Right. But um, for those of those people out there, the ladies and gentlemen that are listening to you and watching this, you know what? I'd like to get some kids involved in some kind of scientific research. Mm -hmm. well, tell, tell them what to do. You're an astroimager, guys, so this is how you can help. Right. So there's a couple of things. One, um, contact me and I'll get you all set up with local students. But also, though, um, if you if you're comfortable just sort of going and interacting with the local schools, one of the things high school teachers often want their students to have these opportunities, but they're way too busy to learn how to do this. And I know because the whole reason I'm doing this is because I was the high school teacher who wanted my students to do research, but I didn't have the background at that time. I was a biologist and neuroscientist. Um, so if you can connect with schools and say, hey, I have this equipment and I have this know-how. Um, and if you have students that wanna do research, here I am, let, let's work together. But I will caution that research, you know, students are going to be like, oh, can I study black holes? And we'll have to say no, not yet. <laughs> For that, you do need to go to graduate school. Um, so what we've developed is, is this really simple double star astrometry, but we're also now making um, variable stars and exoplanet transits more accessible to students, it's something that they can, you know, we're creating tools that make it easier to study this within, for example, a semester. And that's actually one of the biggest um, hurdles is something that can be done. Um, and so what I would say is, you know, look into this double star stuff. And our our team has really, we, we're sort of unique in having developed this program over the last 10 years, including the writing part. Um, and so I would say, you know, I can send you resources, I can send to anyone who's interested, you know, our whole online learning management system, which says, you know, here's how you run an eight week program, or you can stretch it out to 18 weeks. And I would love to interact with anyone. One thing I have found over the years and in doing research is you can't do it. A lot of us want to go just go online and find where's the place online that shows me how to do research with students. But it's a lot more complicated than that. And that's why it requires this community that a lot of us are building. So I would say be part of our community. Um, I think I'm approachable um, and I would love to um, help anyone or point anyone in the right direction or a direction. But that's actually a really important question you asked. Thank you. Could, could I add a couple of things to that answer? Yeah. Uh, because I, I have worked in schools a lot. Yeah. There are an awful lot of clubs um, uh, astronomy clubs all over schools yeah. all over the place so contact your local community college yeah. uh, astronomy professor or your local high school principal even or an activities yeah. director and say yeah. Do you guys have an astronomy club i would like to offer some you know i would like to tell you about particularly if you've, you're in your own astronomy club like the, for me, I'm part of the Riverside Astronomical Society, and right. we do about 60 outreaches a year, and yeah. um, many of them are in schools, of course. And so um, you've got somebody calling on you saying, hey, you come to our school and bring your telescopes with you and show our kids about this. So you talk to that very same person that called you and say, okay, uh, by the way, you know, we can do more than just come out on these one shot, you know, night with the first quarter moon, we can do a whole lot more than that. And particularly at the high school level, um, would, would you like me to, you know, mentor some of your kids? 
there are academic decathlon efforts where mm -hmm. um, they're going to need coaches in in astronomy. And I've done that kind of stuff. And believe me, there's a lot of stuff to to mentor these kids with as, as far as that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So these are some of the things you do, but don't just oh, oh and use the outreach person at your club in the riverside astronomical society john and jose are in charge of outreach well uh i work with them regularly because i go to the outreaches they have to talk to the people and and um and ask them which which programs do you know about do you go to regularly which one of these guys which one of these programs which one of these schools might need somebody who can be their science advisor and um and take it from there okay yeah that's great are there other questions um i because i have my presentation up on my other screen i i don't see the the chat right now so you guys could relay questions yeah, I, I think we've covered the questions at one point or another uh, michael has uh aiken has some really good ideas here that he's okay. uh, sharing with people about how he has been involved before okay. but he's going to get in touch with you we're, we're going to be able to make that contact because he's going to get Perfect. Hold of us. thanks um are there any other questions out there folks um where will we where, where will you be are you going to go to aic i hear I am. I'm going to be at AIC. Yeah, that's going to be my next stop. And then um, I will also be, I've been asked already to come back to any AIC uh, next year. Um, I'll be doing a, a workshop probably on speckle interferometry um, and, and student research there. Um, and I will just continue the circuit I'm on. <laughs> but um, a lot of what I do is online. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank but you. I, I, I also go to a lot of uh, other star parties. Like I was at the Cal Star Star Party in middle of California um, the last couple of days, and it was really amazing. And we we were working on our speckle setup, but we happened to be camped next to um, a high school teacher and ten of his students that were out there just learning how to use telescopes. But oh my gosh, they were so excited! Now they're all trying to go to the Texas Star Party for my program. So a lot of it, you know, is just when you're out there doing whatever outreach you do, if you do outreach, you know, just talking to people because everyone's so interested in this. And then where the other thing was like, where, where were you at a star party last week? Um, the Cal Star Star Party at Lake San Antonio uh, in California. Yeah, it's like up, up, uh, mid mid state. Mid state, yeah, yeah, okay. um, yeah. And then okay. and others keep popping up, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's really exciting, and I love that there's this amazing community with all the expertise. I think the important thing to get out of all this is that, um, yeah, we all got our telescopes, and we all take our pictures, and we all put them on our websites, and we talk on cloudy nights. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole lot to be said for um, getting involved with younger people uh, from 8th, 10th grade, high school, mm -hmm. uh, community college, and the college. Mm -hmm. and sharing your knowledge um, you've got resources that other people don't have and we don't need another picture of m31 but we <laughs> do need more astronomers so uh, you know you know sow your sow your seeds and, and harvest them well for the future and we're going to start wrapping up here are there any other questions i want to remind you that uh, here at, at nightskymaster.com uh, is where you're going to find the information about Carrie and the other experts, the masters down in Australia. For those of you who aren't going to be down there, Nightfall's coming up. Richard writes uh, here, nightfallstarparty.com. And I think that does it for the night. So, Tolga, are we all clear to, to, to check out? I want to say goodbye. Oh, I'll turn myself on here, turn my face on. I want to say goodbye to everybody for the night, the Astro Imaging Channel. And we'll see you. It's Ray, Ray's next week, right? Ray Graylick is talking to us next week, and he's, he's presented for us before, and he'll do a pretty good job. So we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.